Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, where your time is invested and not wasted. Today's video will be all about how to wire a 115 volt blower motor. I will talk about the blower motor itself, and then the little label on here, what important information you can find on there, the little wiring diagram, I'll touch on that a little bit. I'll also cover how to take resistance readings of the different speeds on the motor. Then I will talk a little bit about the capacitor, where it's mounted, how it works, I will also wire this motor just to a extension cord using this thing right here. Then I will also cover how to wire that blower motor to a furnace control board. Just a basic control board that I got off of a Lennox furnace. And then we will also take some amp readings on the different speeds to see what the difference is between all the speeds. So let's start with the motor itself. So we got the motor right here. On this side is where all the wires come out from. Right here you got the rotation plug. And all this is, is basically a plug that allows you to switch the direction of the motor. So it can either spin clockwise or counterclockwise. And in order to switch the rotation or reverse the rotation, all you gotta do is take this plug apart and flip it over. And plug it back in. Like that. So see how now the white is here, goes into the black, and the black is over here, goes into the white. Whereas if I flip it this way, the black is with the black. And later on we'll look at the wiring diagram and see which one is which. So these wires are to reverse the rotation of the motor. You got your ground wire or your earth. This one will usually be green or yellow or green and yellow like mine right here. Just one wire coming out. And then you got this bundle of wires. There's different motors. There's two speed, three speed, four speed motors. This particular motor is a three speed motor. It comes with these two brown wires right here. One of the brown wires has a white stripe on it. The other one's brown, or sometimes they're both just brown wires. These brown wires will go to the capacitor. The white wire is gonna be your common or a neutral. And most 115 volt motors, the neutral or the common will be white. Once in a while, I'll see them be yellow or purple. If your common is not white, if you don't have a white wire, then you'll just have to look on the side of your motor and see that little diagram to see which of your wires is the common. Or if you have a 230 volt motor, then you probably won't even have a common at all. The red wire is typically going to be your lowest speed. A lot of times it is used for the furnace, for the heat. Red wire is the low speed on almost all the motors. The black is typically going to be your AC, the highest speed because cool or dense air requires more air velocity to push it through. And then the blue, in this case, is gonna be our medium speed. And if you have a four speed motor, then there's just gonna be your low, medium low, medium high, and high speeds. On mine, like I said previously, I just have the three speeds, which are these three right here, then the common, and then the capacitor. So that's all the wires on the motor. And then let's just take a look at this label quick. On this label, the information that you need off of it is just the horsepower, which is right here. This is a one-third horsepower motor. You got the RPM, it's a 1075 RPM. It also says right next to it, it's a three-speed motor. Then you have the voltage. And on the bottom right here, it says CAP, which stands for capacitor. As you can see, this motor requires a five microfarad capacitor. And on the right side, you have a little wiring diagram which explains what each wire does. So right on top, it says brown and brown white is the capacitor right there it says sep cap so separate capacitor that's why this motor is called a psc motor permanent split capacitor the capacitor is separate from the motor then you have the white wire which is going to be your neutral or your common and that's always going to be separate from your speeds right below it we have the three speeds right next to each other you got the black the blue and the red which is high speed medium speed and low speed and then right below that it explains the rotation plug so if your blower needs to spin counterclockwise, you would just leave it as is. If you need it to spin clockwise, then you can go ahead and reverse that plug so that your black goes into the white and the white goes into the black to reverse the direction that the motor spins. Now, if for some reason your label is missing or you just want to double check and make sure that those really are the speeds that you think they are, you can use a meter to check the resistance of every speed. So of course you would set your meter to the ohm symbol right there. And the way you would check them is every speed to the common wire. So our common is the white. So I put one lead on the white. 
and then the other lead on the black, let's say. The black is my highest speed. And the highest speed is always going to have the lowest resistance reading. The lowest speed will have the highest resistance reading. So my high speed comes out at 2.6 ohms. Let's try our medium speed. I still have my lead on the common. And then put the other lead on the blue. I got a resistance reading of about 4.8 for my medium speed. And then my low speed should be the highest resistance reading. And it's coming out at 6.2. So the low speed is the highest resistance. Now, if you're measuring your resistance and you're getting OL in between common and one of the speeds or more than one of the speeds, that means either you have a bad blower motor or the thermal overload is open. Every single motor internally will have an overload in it. Not every single motor, but almost all of them will have an overload inside of it. Um, I would have to take this motor apart to show you it. But that overload, if the motor overheats, it opens up and interrupts the circuit. So if you just took your blower motor out and it's still hot, then perhaps you should let it cool off before you try to take any resistance readings. So that is how you measure the resistance on every speed of the motor. And next up, let's try wiring this motor up with just an extension cord. So the plug side is intact, and the other side I just cut off and stripped down the wires. You got three wires coming out the extension cord. You got your hot or your line voltage, which is always going to be the black. The common or the neutral is going to be the white. And the ground or earth is going to be the green. And before we go ahead and wire this up, first of all, you have to wire in a capacitor. If you remember, the capacitor was the two brown wires, or in my case, it's the brown and the brown and white. And here is my five microfarad capacitor. It says right there, five UF, plus or minus 5%. And here are my two wires that go to the capacitor. It does not matter on this capacitor which wire goes where. So I can plug either one in either terminal. And also, all four prongs are connected to the same section, so it also doesn't matter which prong I put the wire in. Whichever is more convenient for you. So I got my capacitor hooked up like that. As for where to mount it inside of a furnace, usually there's a bracket that holds this capacitor to the blower motor housing. If the bracket's not there, you can use like a steel hanging strap to mount it. You could just zip tie it somewhere onto something or maybe onto a bundle of wires, but it's best not to just leave this thing hanging around or dangling on the floor. Do mount it somewhere. So our capacitor is wired up. I'll just set it aside. And then next, to wire up the actual blower motor speed, let's say we want the low speed. And I'm gonna wire up each one of them and take an amp draw just to see the difference. Let's say we want the low speed, which in my case is that red. And then we need the common as well. The way you would wire it up is whichever speed you want to be energized, you will be hooking it up to the black or the line or the hot. So I would hook up the hot to the speed that I want energized, which is the low speed. And I can wire nut those two wires together. As for the common, those two just go white to white, unless yours is a different color common. Put your common to the white wire. Also put a wire nut on that. And then the ground, you can just hook up to the ground that comes from the motor. And this is just a safety, just in case the motor shorts out for some reason. Okay, so we have everything hooked up. We have the low speed hooked up, the commons hooked up, and the ground is hooked up. The rest of the wires don't matter. Um, this motor won't have a lot of torque because there's no blower wheel on it. So I can just turn it on. I'll hold it between my legs so it doesn't move around on us too much. And let's plug it in. I got our meter right here just to measure the amp draw to see what kind of amps we're going to get from the lowest speed, the red wire. So let's plug this bad boy in. There it goes. And let's try measuring the amp draw. So 
So the amp draw on the low speed is 1.27 amps. And keep in mind if there's a blower wheel mounted onto the shaft of this motor, that of course will add a load so the amp reading will be different. But since we're going to be testing all three speeds without a load, you will still see the difference between the amp draws on all three speeds. So let's shut this back off and hook up our blue, which is our medium speed, instead of the red. Okay, and while you're doing this, just make sure that the wires that you're not using are not touching anything metal because there is some a little bit of current that still goes back feeds into these wires or the speeds that aren't used. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but anyways, I hooked up my medium speed to the hot leg. Let's plug it back in and see what amp draw we get on the medium speed. There it goes. Clamp my meter on. And for the medium speed, we're getting an amp draw of 1.96. And just out of curiosity, I'm going to try to just grab this shaft and kind of squeeze on it, which will pretty much simulate like a blower wheel on the shaft. And let's see how that will affect the amp draw when I grab that a little bit. As you can see, that jumps right up. So that's the medium speed. Let's unplug that. And the last one is going to be our high speed. Let's just see what kind of read we get from our high speed. And on the high speed, you can actually hear the motor running a little bit louder. With a blower wheel, this would be a lot more pronounced, but anyway, here's the amp draw on the highest speed. And it's substantially more than what it was on those other two speeds. So for the air conditioner, there's a lot more amp draw, 6.0. So I still have my high speed hooked up and I just want to briefly come back to the little run capacitor. I know this might not be exactly technically correct, but I like to compare it just to like a car battery and an engine. This capacitor is like a battery for the fan motor. It does not help it start, but it does assist it while it's running. But if you don't have a capacitor or if you accidentally forgot to plug it in, your motor will not spin. So I just want to simulate that once. So let's say you replace the blower motor and you forgot to plug the capacitor in. So even though I have everything wired up, you know, you got the ground, the common, and the hot. I got the high speed hooked up. So let's see what happens if I try plugging my power in. My motor just sits there and hums and does absolutely nothing. And if you just leave it in there for a long time, it'll start to get hotter and hotter and could eventually burn out your motor. So definitely not a good scenario. Don't forget to plug those run capacitors in. And last but not least, let's go over typical blower motor wiring on a furnace control board. So typically control boards will have a section for your 120 volt neutrals. It says right here, it'll be labeled 120 volt neutrals. They all go in these prongs right here. And it doesn't matter where you plug it in. Your common from your blower motor, these are all connected to the same circuit. So for example, if you flip your control board over, the circuit right here, you can kind of see that it's all connected. This one section is all one piece. So on the other side, it does not matter where you plug that wire in. But anyways, your neutral or your common would go here. And then right here, this whole red section is your 120 volt hot. So almost all the time, your air conditioner will be labeled as cool right here. That will be your cooling speed. So in my case, this would be the black. Air conditioning pretty much always takes the highest speed. Heat. Heat can be various speeds. A lot of times it'll be the lowest speed, that red, or the one that's next to it, medium low. But I do see the heat speed in various speeds. So it can be either low speed, medium low, or medium high. Then on this board right here, it has a fan section. 
And what that means is basically on the thermostat, you have a fan setting. You could switch it from on or automatic. All the new thermostats will have that. If you switch the fan to on, this will energize this speed right here, whatever you have plugged into this terminal. And then right here, you have park and park. On different boards, this will be called different things. It can be called park or spare. Sometimes it'll be called M1, M2. And this would be where you plug in your unused motor speeds. So as a recap, I quickly just crimped on some connectors. So here's our low speed, right, the red. Let's say I want that to be my constant fan. So if I turn my fan setting to on, it would energize my lowest speed. My black, which is my highest speed, would go to my cooling. Common would go to any of the commons. So let's say I plug it into here. And let's say my blue wire, which is my medium speed, I will set up for my heat. So that's pretty much what it would look like right here, all the wires plugged in. And I plugged in a different wire on purpose for the heat. So let's say you just replaced the blower motor on a furnace and you just simply snipped the wires off and took the blower motor out. If you wanted to, you could just take the blower motor speed from your new motor and just wire nut them together to make a connection instead of using one of the connectors like you see over here. And if you want a little more on how to wire in a new blower motor, I do have a whole video of where I show how to replace a blower motor and I do all the wiring there as well. So if you want to see more of that, go ahead and check that video out as well. There's a lot more helpful information on there on how to replace a blower motor. But yeah, basically that is how you would wire a blower motor to a furnace control board. And the one last thing that I did not cover, let's say I don't want anything on my fan here. Any unused motor speeds you would put on park or spare. So you just plug it right into there or M1, M2. And there's a reason why those are there. And the reason for that is you don't want to just leave your wire bare and just dangling around inside of your furnace. You want to either put a wire nut on it and make sure that's insulated a crimp on or a twist wire nut, or put a connector on it and put it onto the park. Because as I mentioned previously, even if that motor speed is unused, there's still some back EMF going through it. There's just a little bit of current. I have seen these unused blower motor speeds trip breakers when they touch something metal inside of the furnace because somebody had left it uninsulated and just dangling around inside of there. Another thing you don't want to do, let's say you have two unused motor speeds you do not want to wire nut both of those together for that same reason, because these two wires will short out. So do not wire nut your unused motor speeds together. Either put separate wire nuts on them, or if you're wiring it to a control board, put them onto the park or the spare terminals. Well guys, and that is how you wire a blower motor. If you have any further suggestions or tips, maybe I missed something or maybe I didn't say something quite right, please do add them in the comments below to help out everybody else as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time. And for those of you still here, just want to throw this in as well. Let's say you are replacing a blower motor and you just so happen not to have a five microfarad capacitor. That's no big deal because most technicians will at least have a capacitor for the condenser unit outside for the air conditioner. That'll be either 30 by five, 40 by five, whatever the rating is. A lot of times the fan side of it will be five, which is what a lot of the blower motors need. So if you're in a pinch, you could just use one of these. So you take your two capacitor wires and these dual capacitors, they just have the three sections, right? Herm, which is compressor, you got fan and you got common. So the white and brown wire would go to your common, like that. And then the other wire would just be plugged into the fan and you simply leave the compressor disconnected and this would function the same as this capacitor would right here. Because who knows, you might just end up using this someday.